we talked about it yesterday as we were, um, you know, kind of wrapping up yesterday's show that Amari Nyblack was headed to Texas for a visit. And sure enough, he commits to the Texas Longhorns last night. And now you've got one of the best stretch the field tight ends um, who averaged 16 yards per reception at Alabama coming in as JT Sanders is leaving. I don't know. Sounds like a pick up where you left off reload situation. Cause you got Gunnar Helm to do it all who will block and be the, be the lead blocker on counter plays and lead plays and serve as a receiving threat. Uh, my man, Eric Henry at horns 24, com did a nice job kind of breaking down where Gunnar Helms routes have been mostly within 10 yards of the line of scrimmage. Uh, whereas Amari Nyblack, his receptions more along the lines of JT Sanders down the field. So that's a, it appears to be a nice pickup. Oh, it's huge, man. Like, I've been talking about this guy for a long time. I remember when we were previewing Alabama for week two when the Horns went and upset the Crimson Tide in Tuscaloosa 34-24. to And that whole week, I kept bringing up Amari Nyblack. You know, a lot of people haven't heard of him, but just watching the film prior to that game and seeing the athleticism, like, on display – like, yeah, you knew this guy has a potential to be a big time player, not only on the college level, but also on the next level. And when you see what Jeff Banks and Steve Sarkeesian have done with JT Sanders and your coach leaves and Nick Saban, like, why wouldn't you want to be a part of that? Just like everybody else, you know, just like Kendrick Blackshear and Isaiah Bond. I mean, it only makes sense. Again, like we've been talking about, Chip, it ain't tampering. Like Sark and Nick Saban, good friends. That's the homie. That's the mentor. Got that number on speed dial. So any person that Sark wants from that team, I'm sure Nick Saban's going to put in a good word for him. Like, I don't care what Lance told us yesterday about Nick Saban having his own office and this and that. Like, nah, at this point, Nick Saban going to look after for the homies, you know? And Sark meant a lot to him and his career and vice versa. So now th this shouldn't be no surprise. Again, Amari Nyblack, he's a stud. Like that speed for somebody at that size, you don't see that very often. That's not just, you know, hanging around trees in the transfer portal or around the nation. Like those guys are – you know, one in a thousand. So, yeah, when you have a big time player like JT Sanders, who is obviously going to the NFL draft, and I don't think he had the best year that he could have due to probably that ankle injury. But man, picking up Amari Nye Black, and I have a lot of faith in Gunnar Helm, like a, a ton of faith. You talk about Eric Henry, who does a great job for Horns 24 7, what the article he wrote. Like, I'm right there with you. Like, Gunnar Helm needs to be a part of this. But the more weapons, the better. God forbid anybody go down. I wish Steve Sarkeesian would have played Gunner Helm more when you saw JT Sanders go down. Hopefully you live and you learn. But, yeah, picking up Amari Nyblack, who I thought was the third best tight end after Brock Bowers and JT Sanders last year, that is huge for this Texas staff. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, Steve Sarkeesian. He's the honey badger right now when it comes he, to – He's he, 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 he getting everybody. Yeah. And everybody wants people are like, Oh, what about Caden Proctor? I'm like, now hold on. Texas did have the number one offensive line recruiting class in 2022. Cam Williams been waiting his turn. Let's see what Cam Williams has. You don't want to, you only want to add where it makes sense. And when you lose all that experience at receiver, it makes sense to bring in some veteran guys, Silas Bolden, Grad transfer. He's probably looking to pull off the same stuff that A.D. Mitchell did. Who knows? I mean, let's be honest. Matthew Golden is going to have to compete with Ryan Wingo to be the, the dominant outside receiver. You've got Isaiah Bond, more like the worthy 
role. And Silas Bolden is kind of like the receiver version of Keelan Robinson. Yeah. And Jonte Cook. I mean, Jonte Cook is a guy who's already in the system. He's learning inside and outside because we know in Sarkeesian's offense, you got to learn the whole thing. You got to learn the concepts. You have to know what everyone's doing on every play so that you are not, when you have an option route, you're not running into another route. You got to know what you're doing. And that's, you know, people, I think Worthy got kind of short sold on that. He was a big time. I mean, he worked and he learned that offense and he learned it fast, faster than most. And let's see if Isaiah Bond, Silas Bolden, Matthew Golden come in and and pick up right where they left off from their offenses because they pick up this Steve Sarkeesian offense as quickly as Worthy did as a freshman. Remember, Worthy had 21 touchdown catches in 21 games. That's something I'll remember forever about him. That was impressive. Yeah. Yeah, Xavier Worthy was special, man. Like, I say what you want about him and that 2022 season where he was injured for who knows how long, but he always kept fighting. And for somebody that size, like this year, he really showed me something. When the ball was in his hands, that dude, he was aggressive. He was physical. Again, somebody that size, usually they shy away from contact. Usually they're about, you know, juking and going east and west more than north and south. Xavier Wordy was all about going north and south. And he was doing the head hunting and doing, you know, initiating contact when guys tried to, you know, knock him out and stuff. So, yeah, Xavier Wordy – Probably the third best wide receiver in Texas history. When you look at the stats and the numbers and after Jordan Shipley and Roy Williams, I mean, X, he's right there. I mean, I'm sure CB and the rest of the people in our comment section and our code of text line will let me know otherwise. But, hey, Xavier Wordy, he got the job done in the three years, and hopefully he's going to get the fruits of his labor in this draft based off his production in college, because I think he's going to test through the charts at the combine. I think he's going to show everybody like, oh, man, this guy, he might be one of those ones, man, the Zay Flowers of the world. And, you know, going back to what you said, Chip, with Sark's offense and, you know, how everybody needs to know everything as the wide receiver core. I mean, back in the Alabama days, one of my favorite pictures ever of all time i forgot which receiver group was it i don't know if it was rugs or jerry judy or Devonte smith or jalen waddle but two of those guys were playing rock paper scissors on which one was going to run this route because they knew that was the td route and that was the first option whichever one mac jones or tua whoever the hell was running quarterback at the time they were playing rock, paper, scissors on, okay, you're going to do this route. I'm going to do that route. All right, rock, paper, scissors. Oh, scissors, beats paper. I'm Jalen Waddle. I'm running this route. I'm going to get the touchdown. Like, that's what we want. That's what you want as a Texas fan. So everybody's trying to figure out, man, where's Jante going to be? Is Ryan Wingo going to be a part of this? Where are they going to put Matthew Golden and Isaiah Bond? At the end of the day, if you're a defensive coordinator, I hope you have those questions too. I hope you have no idea what the hell's going on and you have no idea where Sark's going to put anybody because versatility, that's what you need in this offense. Chris Jackson's looking for it. A.J. Milwee's looking for it. Steve Sarkeesian's looking for it. Quinn Ewers, damn sure, looking for it. And if everybody's in sync, then this 2024 team could put up some serious numbers this season. Yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, Joe K says, definitely feeling better about our offense after losing Xavier Worthy, A.D. Mitchell, J.T. Sanders, Jordan Whittington, and Jonathan Brooks to the draft. Thanks for retiring, Nick. Yeah, Nick, again. Yeah. Great timing for Steve Sarkeesian's contract extension and great timing for Steve Sarkeesian to pick up some uh, very promising replacements for guys who are moving on from the Longhorns roster, especially on offense. But don't forget about Kendrick Blackshear, the incredibly athletic sideline to sideline linebacker who was progressing in um, 
the Alabama defense is seen as an up and comer. And this is, I mean, that's a big time pickup too, because Texas, while Leonga LaFau and, um, you know, Leonga LaFau and Samaje Burrell were the other linebackers in the class with Anthony Hill. And Burrell is seen as a really physical. I'm, I'm interested to see how he takes off in this spring because Burrell, this is the time for him to start making his case. And I was told when they signed Burrell, you love his athleticism and his physicality. So let's see if he can start to make a push because um, we've heard a lot about Leong LaFau at the Sugar Bowl media day. Jeff Choate said he is an elite pass dropper of Leong LaFau said that he has a sixth sense about where to drop into coverage to always take away the route he's supposed to take away. <laughs> what do you think of that, Zay? Uh, we, we, yeah, we've discussed this before. Why are he playing then? I know. That don't make any sense to me. That's If he's out here reading coverages like Junior Seau, why ain't the boy playing? You know, Jeff Choate, who just picked up, um, God, who did he just pick up in the portal from the horns? Like, oh, Keaton Crawford, yeah, like going to Nevada with Jeff Cho, like, okay. loot to Keaton, shout out to him. But I, yeah, I can't, I don't understand why coaches say that. I mean, I, we're in the era of you want to say anything just to keep these guys around and just stop them for entering the transfer portal. So you got to big them up and give them a lot of confidence and praise, even though that might not be accurate. But damn, when I hear that, I'm wondering, I mean, there could have been times you put him in there. Michael Penix was throwing it everywhere. Maybe he could have got a pick, something, you know. But, hey, we'll see. Love David Bender coming back. He had a solid fifth year. And he ain't going to no. be like Brock Cunningham in the sixth year and give you absolutely nothing. Like, he's going to be – Shoots, this guy looks like he's trying to get to the NFL. Slither his way in there, put enough film on him and Anthony Hill. David been to Anthony Hill? I'm liking that right now. I really am. Well, and if, okay, if you didn't want to take Jalen Ford off the field, and I get it, Jalen Ford, four interceptions in 2022. That's a dude who always seemed to be in the right place at the right time. Three forced fumbles in 2022. Didn't quite have the same year in 2023. Partly because teams had more film to, to try and game plan Jalen Ford into situations where he wasn't as comfortable as he was in 2022. But Jeff Choate said that Leonga LaFau provides a good ying to Anthony Hill's Yang. And it sounds to me like Leong LaFau is sort of a middle linebacker. Like that's his predominant position. So that would make sense if you didn't want to take Jalen Ford off the field for Leong LaFau. But now he's battling for that middle linebacker position with David Benda. Because I think you have to have Anthony Hill, who can also play middle and is pretty much a like, to the mold fit at middle. But he's so athletic and so dynamic. You can have him at weak side. You can have him at strong side. You want to have position flexibility with with Anthony Hill. So I think the battle is Leonga LaFau and David Benda in the middle. and. And if they're interchangeable, even better, because then the offense is like, you know, you're always trying to identify the mic. If you can't identify the mic or if you can disguise that, man, that helps. I mean, mostly RPO situations, you're just counting guys in the box. But they they needed more depth, and they need Leon LaFau to be a guy who can come on the field and be a plus player for them. And he's a guy to watch in the spring for sure with Jalen Ford moving on, no doubt. 
Yeah, that's going to be one of the funnest things about this team. Like, who's going to step up that came in as a freshman is going to take that sophomore jump, you know? Like, that's that's going to be key for this team and some of the positions. I mean, Kendrick Blackshear, who knows how they use him, you know? Who knows how Pete Kwiatkowski and Nansen want to go about using him? Like, is he more, since he's so athletic, is he more of a Mo Blackwell type? Which is Mo Blackwell. He's back, right? Yeah. Yeah. So let's not forget about him. You right. know, that's a dude right. that missed four weeks. Like, who knows if he would have progressed a little more if he was healthy the whole season. If the, you know, coaches, staff would have had more confidence if he was available. Because he came in right when Big 12 play basically started. So he could have a bounce back year. Like, and he was a sub package guy. Like, he, sure. he came in on third downs when they would move Anthony Hill up on the line when Burke was hurt. And that was a good package for Texas. Um, they, they had Mo Blackwell in there on, on passing downs cause he's a former safety, but yet he hits. I'm excited to see Mo Blackwell and look, Johnny Nansen coming in as the new linebackers coach, he's going to have some ideas and he and Pete Kwiatkowski worked together at Montana state. It was a long time ago, but I think they know how to talk to each other. They know how to communicate. Jeff Choate. And Pete Kwiatkowski worked together at Boise and Washington. I mean, that was a great fit. That worked out really well for Texas. And now you bring in Johnny Nansen, who also has history with Kwiatkowski. It's funny. People saw Kwiatkowski at the press conference for the Sugar Bowl. And he's not, you know, he's not a wow guy, right? When he talks, he's not a guy who... You're like, oh man, I get why I'd run through a wall. He's low key. Yeah. And sometimes he's like, sounds like he's mumbling a little bit, but he's, everyone says he's the, he's the mad scientist that he's not the rah rah guy. He's not the in, in your face guy. He's the, the quiet guy who's putting it all together in the lab. So, Look, the defense took a big step last year against the run. Now they got to maintain that without Tavondre Sweat, without Byron Murphy. You're putting it in the hands of Alfred Collins and Vernon Broughton and guys like Sadir Mitchell, Dre Bledsoe. I, I know Texas is still looking in the portal uh, for another defensive tackle after the Jamari Caldwell. Um, recruitment went sideways with Bo Davis going to LSU. So uh, I think everyone's ecstatic about the offense. Now we got to see where Texas is on defense.